It's a beautifully simple fact of mathematics that in every situation where the rate of change of a system is directly proportional to the amount <clears throat> of that particular variable, an exponential behavior results. This is incredibly important to understand. Whenever what you get is proportional to what you have, you've got exponential behavior. This enables you to put a dollar into, for instance, the uh, <clears throat> the bank and then exponentially the interest the interest depends on what you have right you get an interest rate that depends on how much money is in the bank so exponential growth of your money will occur also that's the reason why in the month of april somebody says hey i want to give you a dollar and then double it for every day that's in april or i want to give you a million dollars which one are you going to take by the first 10 days, you'll think you're screwed if you take a dollar and then have it doubled. But by the end of 30 days, you are rolling in it because that's exponential behavior. Because the amount that you get each day is proportional to the amount that you have. So exponential behavior is incredibly powerful. There are two, eh, three, eh, four, no. Three equations primarily that we need to study for exponential behavior. In particular, there's this, the number as a function of time. It's n naught times e to the minus lambda t. And then there's also the rate or the activity. The decay rate is the decay constant times how much you've got. And that's sort of the same equation as the initial rate being the decay constant times how much you initially had. So that's interesting. And then the final equation that I think is kind of cool is the definition of the half-life. And I would say, first of all, that time one half is the natural log of two divided by lambda. There's our half in there. And we can see how that's derived in another video, the one that you probably have already watched. Let's hope you've watched that one. Or we can just solve this for lambda, and we can say that the decay constant is the natural log of two divided by the half-life. Oh, so if you're given the half-life, then you can find the decay constant like that. So I wanna just draw a graph using these equations and help you really understand what's happening here in exponential decay. So I'll take, let's say I take just these equations right here and draw you a graph. Here's our graph. I want some axes. I want to start out with, uh, let's see, this is going to be time, and I'm going to measure time in seconds. And against that, I'm going to measure millions of atoms. Whoa, millions of atoms. And the cool thing about measuring millions of atoms is rather than just measuring, say, 100 atoms or something, or presenting it as a fraction, we got real numbers, but I can also get something like, 72.8 million atoms, and I still won't believe that I'm splitting atoms uh, because that would be a mess. <clears throat> so here I'll give you one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, and five seconds. Five and one and three and two and four. Good. Let's say we're starting with 100 million. One. 100 million atoms. What might be interesting is to study when we get to 50 million atoms. And also, I'm probably interested in when we get to 25 million atoms. All right, and then you probably also might be interested in when we get to 12.5 million atoms, right? Because a half-life would occur right here. So the first system that I wanna study is when the half-life is one second. And that's gonna take us from here to here if the half-life is one second. It also means, let's draw that, it also means that after two seconds we'll be at 25 million atoms, and after three seconds we'll be at 12.5 million atoms. So you can see that this sucker is cutting the difference between itself and the uh, <coughs> x-axis in half every second. That's the idea of a half-life, and that's why we get this asymptotic behavior right here. But let's figure out what lambda is. Can I solve this sucker for lambda like I had just a minute ago? Lambda is the natural log of two divided by the half-life. So here comes our calculator, and we'll find ourselves a little lambda. 
Oh my goodness, did you notice that I've already done all these problems? Yeah, I was sneaking up on you guys. So I'll plug in the natural log of two, and then I'll divide that by the half-life, which was supposed to be one second. Oh, I get 0 0.693. Lambda is 0 0.693, and it's in units of one over seconds is. All right, cool. Now, what if we had a half-life of two seconds? In that case, we'd start with the same sample, and we get, when we get to two seconds, then we'd have 500 million. Oh, and how long would it take, sorry, to 50 million. How long would it take to get to 25 million? Well, it would take four seconds to get that far. So we've got a different graph. Oh, and then we won't need to see it. At eight seconds, it would be down to this level here, the 12.5 million. So let's get a different, um, let's get a different color. You wanna go blue with this one? No, we can go, we can go sharp red with this guy right here. I'll start and I'll start hitting these guys and it's like boom, boom. Boom, like that, and let's get a lambda. That's a two second half-life because half of the particles have decay after two seconds. So I just come in here and I divide by two. Look what it says right there. Half-life is in the denominator and the natural log of two is in the numerator. So here I can say lambda equals, well, half as much as that one. Oh, interesting. So lambda is a, a number that represents how often a decay happens. Or another way of looking at lambda, it's a number that represents how likely a decay is to happen. So if a decay is not very likely to happen, that would be a small lambda right here, then you're going to have a longer time to get half of them to decay. I hope that is sort of stupidly obvious. And I can give you one more. What if I tell you that the half-life is half a second? Oh snap, that means after one full second, it will have had two half-lives, which means we've got a dot right there. And after, whoa, that means there's a dot right here and a dot right there. And after just one more half second, we will have had three half-lives. So after three half-lives, it's down to two to the third. That's what we get for three half lives because each half-life is a halving. So after 76 half-lives, we ought to have one over two to the 76th of what we started with. That's what a half-life is doing. It's cutting it in half by the number of half-lives that you've had. So if I have another half-life, I'll be down here, and then another half-life will be down here, and then another half-life will be down here. Wow, that is another beautiful curve. These are not, these are not, these are not inverse graphs. They are all starting from the same point. They're all asymptotic this direction, but do not confuse them with inverse graphs. Let's find what lambda is in this case. I'm supposed to take the natural log of two and divide it by the half-life, which is half a second. So I know that dividing by a half, I could put a 0.5 in here. I'll go crazy and put in some, oh, look, it's just twice that again. Lambda equals 1.39 per second. Oh, it's like a rate of how, sort of, it's sort of like a rate. It would be a rate if we multiplied it by the number that we have. I see. So at this instant, if I take lambda and multiply it by 100 million, I can say at that instant, I have 1.39 hundred million per second. But notice that N is rapidly decreasing. So it's not consistent to say that 1.3900 million would decay in that second because over the course of that second, our lambda, no, sorry, our lambda hasn't changed, but our N has greatly changed. So maybe you wanna take an average of here. Oh man, you probably have to do some calculus. I don't wanna talk about that.